What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Here we go, let's get started here. So we're gonna be uh, talking about range breaking strats. Yeah, it's not, it's not a review of last week. And then we'll have Q and A sporadically throughout the webinar, like, you know, to give us, to give us a break of lecture and talking so much. And you know, if, if at any time you have a question, just go ahead and ask it and we'll try to get to it. And then we'll have a small one at the end as well. And without further ado, let's get started. Also, yep. when in the course of human events it becomes necessary, my, my, my freedom documents finally came in today. So that's, that's just so I can remember that they came in today. All right. So where, uh, where were we last week? Right. So last week, um, we were kind of on the, we were kind of teeter tottering for control. Last week's market was different than this week's market. Last week's market, we were kind of in this big, it was kind of the everyone's market. It was the fun, like half the stocks are tanking and half the stocks are ripping. And so as long as you have good risk management, you know, you can, you know, you can have a trade every single day and you should be able to be green every day. This, yeah. this market is, has the market this week has definitely, you know, we were in a battle con for control. It's definitely changed this week. The battle has been won, but last week, the f the few, the first few States were opening up. And so the, you know, the spy was kind of in lingo, like the spy was seeing that as bullish news, but it didn't really go anywhere. So I thought that we might stay in a range between 280 and 300. And I thought small caps would remain healthy until we got an unhappy ending, which was, you know, something like Acre today, right? And so basically, but I thought that we were kind of getting a little, you know, like if we continued healthy, like a healthy, you know, everyone's market for another week, I would start to get nervous on the long side because eventually we always, like all the small caps, eventually there's going to be an offering that kills the, the, the vibe always like. So if you go an extended period without an offering, you, like you should always be like smelling and smelling around for one. So I start to get cautious after, you know, if we haven't had an offering for a while. And today, of course, we got it. So basically, I think that the shorts won. Uh, this week has been very, and I don't know if Tay's in here or Harry's in here or Flash or Kilo. I know they like the long. It, it's been very tough for, sh for for longs in this market. I want to go over a few charts, um, especially to go over this. But um, basically, range has still been comfortable. That's that's really positive in the market. The range has still been good. There's no like super, we don't have a handful of MG and Xs, right? That just, the, the range is just too scary to even trade. We've got a comfortable range. The shorts are definitely in control of this market. Uh, and one thing, one way that you can tell that is once stocks go sub view up, they've typically, until today really, they've t they typically haven't been like looking back really. It's been very tough to be a longer because like if you don't get that one pop in the morning that stocks may or may not yield, it's kind of been really tough. Like there hasn't been that great entries. Like, right? And I want to go over some, some dip buy fails in the last week. The bullishness has definitely faded since the last week. And it's definitely more lean towards, you know, just everything kind of kaputting. Uh, but stocks have been relentless with the selling um, given the, you know, we had a couple of pre-market tanks or offerings and the tanks have been brutal. And what I mean by that, and let's just go over it here. The, the tanks have been just, I made a list of them, but I forgot, but I'm going to try to remember them all. The tanks have been absolutely just killer. Like starting from this pre-market tank on a pop, like this, like just no yeah. at all. Then we get this one pop and normally every most longers in the world know that like, this is a pretty good spot to long. You just get dumped on, right? Same thing here. Like it pops over view up and you want to dip here and like, it just fails. Yeah. Right? You know, like you get a push up. I, I, I can't remember if this was a wick or not. I, th I don't think it was. The wig, a wig. wig. Yeah, it was this a wig. Was a wig. This was yeah. a wig. Um, this one wasn't. But yeah, it's just like, I mean, you buy a VWAP reclaim over this high and it just stuffs you right away. It's been very tough. There's another one was NNVC. Like you see this kind of, hold on, it wasn't today. It was like this day, right? Where it pops up. And again, like we're seeing this pattern where like, this pops up that far. You can expect a nice first bounce or dip guy by here. Yeah. An example of a failed first bounce. Like 
stocks normally going straight down after that straight nice. down like dip buyers are fucked what was another one crex did it right like yeah like the tanks here like normally you get a move like this you know like you, you get a move this was after hours oh no this was like yeah you get a move like this and it just it, it, this one does have a bounce and but like it's not very strong that's not the one i wanted to go over though i wanted to go over this one. this one right like check out this pop up and normally you'll expect a dip buy right here and this is where i warned about this one right like like i was like dude normally this is a buy but in this market this is just absolutely effing sucked so like i ain't buying this one and thankfully i saved myself here but we're in a market where just these these VWAP tanks, like even here, like you just get slammed on. Like there's just no. That's exactly why I, I shot in your 5.3. Right. Like this is just, I mean, normally like there's a little bit, like maybe it pushes up and stuffs another time. And, but I mean, there's just no relief at all for longs right now. If you're a debt buyer and you saw, you saw my message right when <laughs> you bought. I'm sorry, Armando. But yeah, it's just, it, it, did Acre do it too? Okay. This one had a bounce. This one had a bounce, but I was terrified in the market to even take it and then straight decay. And then, and then like it, it like if you weren't surprised that this one went this low, uh, you're lying, right? Because normally yeah. these kind of hold, like I thought about adding, but I was like, you know, I know it's going to bottom out soon. I, like I honestly, I expected it to bottom out in the forties or thirties, but I didn't expect it for 10. Like this is just a sign of shorts are in control. So that's what I mean by the tanks have been brutal. It's been very difficult to, to feel safe even buying anything. Like you don't want to, like stocks are obviously stuffing. Like you don't want to chase highs, but you're too afraid to buy the dip. So in, in that regard, shorts have won, won the battle. But yeah, like, so the patterns that have been, that have excelled this week have been first resistances and you got to scalp the longs off. Like if you bought, like you got to scalp those longs off the lows and at VWAP reclaims have been working. But, um, you know, you don't want to be buying at VWAP. Like that, the, the classic VWAP dip buy has been getting just stuffed too hard. But the good thing is that's, what, that's what's been leading to great VWAP shorts. Like the whole NNVC one, like the fact that the dip buy absolutely failed, right? The fact that the, the dip buy absolutely just got annihilated on NNVC, that's what makes the VWAP, that's what makes that VWAP pop better, right? Because, I mean, all yeah. the dip buyers here are totally like they didn't even have a chance to get out like if it pops here and they have a chance to get out and then they have a chance to sell it okay maybe when you come up there's less sellers when it just falls like a rock down here you know like pops are just going to get taken advantage of for sales so in turn it's it's created good vwap shorts right vwap has been a better short indicator than a long indicator for sure yeah recently yeah and and stocks have noticeably notably been trending when they trend to the downside like there's no stopping them like the crex fade at the end of the day that entered into a downtrend off the end of the day and it's just straight up lower high lower low lower high lower low this is typically though when we see this kind of action this is typically typically where we enter the dead market for a bit because eventually longs just start saying you know they start just giving the middle finger to every single play right longs won't longs won't touch anything all right, so this is normally when we start entering the dead market because if longs don't buy anything, there's no plays for shorts. You know, stocks won't pop. So, you know, this is normally where we enter that market. But, you know, like if we continue the, the selling path that we're on. But the other alternative is that, you know, we get a little bit of tug of war, which I think we kind of saw today. And I, you can tell that I posted this before the Acre offering. Uh, but yeah, Acre recovered, uh, APDN recovered, like, and Genius was strong. So like, we started to see this little tug of war action, right? We started to see this tug of war action between the, like the longs are starting to say, no, like we want stocks to go up, right? So it becomes this tug of war and the tug of war is the best, right? But we want the tug of war. We don't want longs to give up. We want tug of war so that it goes from seller's market back to buyers, to sellers, to buyers, right? We don't want to have that portion of a dead market where longs just give up so i thought it was a good thing that today we started to see genus spike we started to see apdn reclaim vwap we started to see acre reclaim VWAP. that tug of war is just going back and forth in the everyone's market taking turn on who's control and so that's kind of what we saw today here's the thing um this is what i think is going to be the determining factor i ultimately think tomorrow is going to be the determining factor on whether on Friday, on next week, Monday, if we start to enter into, uh, like if, if we see a bullish day tomorrow, that means on Monday, we'll probably enter into a more, a long dominated where longs take some control back. 
All right, we'll start. Yep. And if there's just if it's just dead tomorrow, I think we had, I think basically this uh, acre offering just kind of killed it and long. Yeah. Started. So I just I think, hope something runs tomorrow. You know, otherwise, you know, next week is going to be boring as well. I I agree. Tom. I think I think tomorrow is the determinant for are we going to end? Are we tu- are we going to have a tug of war, which I think is favorable to everybody, or are we going to enter the you know the the market where longs say no? Would you guys short death line going into zombie hour, anticipating for all day fader? I I I'm typically done. I don't do it really. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, you do if it? you really want to do that. You need to put a stop over the deadline, right? So whatever that might be, and if you really want to anticipate, uh, you know, all day fader, you have to choose, like, you know, what what will be your stop, like your hard stop, and because you get in, you know, uh, like the bounce back into that deadline, and you you want to anticipate it for the whole day, you need to put a stop on, and you know, if wrong. I mean, so be it, right? But that's that's the only way I, I would do. But uh, I usually don't do that. Um, the deadline I think works best, maybe in the first thirty minutes, and then you know just cover before zombie or like you know a two p.m. reversal. All right, guys. Well, All right, guys. Have a good one. See you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.